everyone, it's Tomatoda, and today I have a pixel cane tutorial. For the tutorial, you'll need to pick out an image that you want to make, and I chose this one. I got it off of Pinterest, and I think originally it was for a candy bracelet, but if you want to make this specific pattern yourself, I'll leave a link in the description box below for the website where you can actually download it. When you pick your pixel, make sure it's not like a bunch of squares or else it just gets really complicated. And also, for this heart, I'm just going to... And the technique or method that I use is um, I kind of make a guideline first. So I already rolled some of my clay and this is on the thickest setting, which is about 2 millimeters. So in order for it to be a square, I will make a grid or a chart or a measurement on this piece of paper in two millimeter increments. And after that's done, align everything together. And then I'm going to go horizontal and this is how thick my cane is going to be. Typically my canes are about this thick, but I need to make more than usual for a separate purpose. And then I'm going to number just to save time. And I have this glass thing here. It's actually from a picture frame. I'm going to shove the measurement thing underneath the glass. And I'll also add this next to it. I will be adding the first layer. This is translucent because I decided I wanted it to be translucent. See how I use this as a guide? Accuracy is key. So although I think pixel cane making isn't as difficult as regular cane making, you do have to be really, really precise. It's up until 16, no 14. But just in case, I'm gonna leave a little bit of room like this. And then here's my first layer. And then I know there's color here, but these are just going to be white. It's cause it's cut off. I need another round. So the first layer has one, two, three, four. four whites, right? Then one, two, three, four. I'm going to use my blade to mark the bottom part too. That's four blocks. And I will add it precisely. Next we have is blue, but then after blue is also another four. So while we're at it, it's four, four, four. I'm going to cut four, four, four. Then I'm going to take my blue and what I need is one and one on the opposite side. Look at the numbers from straight up because if you look at it from the side, it might not align correctly. If you look at these, like this one's really square, but this one's not, right? I won't risk it. I'm not going to use ones that I feel like aren't perfect enough. Better to be safe than sorry. And then add it. One, and kind of use your blade to even push it in. So that's one. And then we have four, four blocks of background. And then we have another one. And then another four backgrounds. So this is where our pixel will be ending. I'm gonna, take off a, I'm gonna leave a little bit more just in case, but that's, there's excess. So the next is three, three, two, three, three. Then um, there's a huge block here, right? Of Three, three, three. It's a square basically. So I'm just going to do it block like this and then do these two layers, do this square, these two layers, and then just kind of like do this one whole line. So you can go vertically, you can go horizontally. This one is a little bit too short, so I'm going to redo it. Now, of course, I can just do three layers and then cut them, but there's distortion when you cut. I'm scared that like a thick 
layer, especially when the clay is warm, will cause a lot more distortion than necessary. I'm going to add it this way. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I bought a bunch of female clay and I bought it specifically for cane making, not for my regular crafting. I also do recommend Fimo. It's made my life a lot easier when making canes because it's really firm, so it holds the shape really well. Um, specifically, I'm using Fimo Professional and Fimo Effect. Then we're going to fit in the long blue layer. And then basically you just keep going until you hit the end. So the eyes are going to be white, not translucent. Now we're going to add a little bit of more clay around and then reduce it. But before we do that, we have to clean up the edges. So I'm going to lightly slice everything just until they're even enough. You have to cut straight down, but you know, so I honestly have a hard time with that myself. So just try your best. And that is why I added um, an extra layer on the top and bottom because I knew we would have to end up cutting bits and pieces off. And then we're going to take more translucent clay and just wrap it around. And then keep adding on until your desired thickness. Alright, if you see this picture, it's 14 by 15, which is like almost a square, and this is kind of nowhere near a square. I'll add more. That's a good squarish shape, I guess. I'm going to even out the bottom. And now we're going to let it cool down for uh, maybe 10 minutes because some parts are still warm due to handling it more often and some parts are colder which means stiffer clay. By letting it cool down, the whole block is going to have an even temperature. It'll distribute the clay more evenly when you're reducing. So yeah, be right back. Time to reduce. I'm going to just kind of squeeze it evenly and then I will even up the face. I typically don't do it, but it's a tester just to see if that will result in less end wastage, hopefully. Time to cut the face. <laughs> Look at this thin sheet. Alright, and start reducing. 
I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in my previous cane video, but if you guys want to know more like specifics and techniques about cane reducing, I'll leave a link in the description box below of a video that helped me with cane reducing. I'm going to cut it in half now. Hey yo! Not too bad. I'm gonna use this one for my next YouTube video and this one will be for the current one. You can see that there are empty spaces. I'll take some of the clay from the corners. All right, that's perfect. And then I'm going to make sure it's centered. I'm going to press down into it and then use this to draw an outline. Cut straight down. And although it looks like a circle on this side, it's not a circle on this side. It's particularly because I can't cut down straight. Alright, now we continue to reduce. I actually think this needs another layer because I can see the blue through it. Doesn't this guy look like he's in pain? Help me! So if I measure it now, 1.5 centimeters. So that's 50 millimeters. I'm going to roll it out just to smooth everything. All right. Then I'm going to cut this in half. Ha, 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 ha. Success. Now, what I like to do for my Instagram video is pick the funniest end, which I guess would be this one. I'll use this one for my Instagram video. And then I'm going to continue to reduce this one until it is 10 millimeters or one centimeter. I'm going to cut this in half now. Weedy, weedy, weedy. And at last, this will be five millimeters. I'm going to cut this into four. Let's see. Then I'm going to take a piece of paper. This is scrap paper. Make sure there's no printing on the side you're using because we don't want the print to transfer over. And we will make a little holder for our canes since we will put them in the freezer. So I'm gonna put each clay into a little cubby. All right, time to stick them in the fridge for... I like to leave them in for about an hour and I'll be right back. After everything has been cut, you can tell that the shapes aren't exactly circular. So I'm going to kind of reshape them by hand. But you don't want to um, you don't want to touch them all too much just because it will warp. Just push it a little bit here and there. Turn it around, push it a little bit here and there. And then place it on a piece of paper. Now as you can tell, my slicing isn't exactly the best, which is why I was thinking about investing in this machine called a poly slicer, but um, I don't know. Let me give you a few tips about cutting. If you use a very soft clay, it'll cause a lot of warping. You want to buy sharp blades. You want to take the canes out of the fridge one by one instead of all of them at once. Because clay tends to warm up really quickly. I would say like under a minute, it's already at room temperature. Which is also my next point, you want to cut fast. And if I think the cane is way too long to be cut under one minute, I will slice it up into sections, which you have seen me do with the 5mm cane. With the smaller canes, I do like to roll them and then cut them just so it keeps like a more circular shape sometimes.
And when your paper is almost full, you're going to put it into your oven. The instructions for your polymer clay should be on the wrapping. But typically, it is 275 degree Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes, which is what I am going to do. Also, keep in mind that <clears throat> the outside is translucent, so after it's baked, it's gonna look different. Here's all the pieces. And now what I'll do is I will separate them into different groups like A grade and B grades and C grades. And then I'll also be checking for dust. Not sure if you can see. There's a little piece of dust here. And what I like to do is take my X-Acto knife and just scrape it off. So yeah, that's the end of my pixel cane tutorial. I hope it helped you guys maybe, you know, attempt cane making. Let me know if you have any other questions. Just leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.